Am I gone? <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to Friday's Gab and Gush at Farmhouse Fabrics. Sally and Kristen here, and we have some, like, total cuteness to show you today. Um, Abby Wilkinson, Abby D. Wilkinson, and middle of May, Mason Arness have, um, we've, we've got pictures from Abby, and we have uh, samples from Mason. So, um, let's, let's start with this teddy bear. Yeah. So Abby has been posting, and so we decided that we needed to contact her to get all the information. Are, because are we totally out of this, this color blue? Maybe I don't not. think so. Okay. So um, this little teddy bear, she's, I don't know how she's using them or where, but I, I bought the pattern because I wanted to sew this with my girls. So it's a little teddy bear, and I couldn't find this exact same one on Amazon, but, but Abby gave us the information for the Simplicity S936, what is it? Yeah, S, um, S for simplicity, 9360, and it's got all kinds of little animals in it. Hey, does it have a, oh, I thought I saw a turtle, because that, that would have been perfect for Charlie. Uh-huh. But this is a cute, cute pattern. It is cute. So, and so Abby did order the, um, the, I mean, she did put in, <clears throat> like, the real, I want to say the real nose and eyes. It's like not the real nose and eyes, but it's not but hand it's embroidered. Not, it's not hand <laughs> embroidered, and they're cute, and they're the kind that you can get the set, the nose, and the and the <laughs> eyes, and <laughs> and so on her story one day she showed how she punched them in there and got them in place, and she even showed her children were stuffing the cute stuffing the stuffed animals. They were cute. So um, she has a couple different options here um, where she's used uh, the Liberty of London quilting cotton. There's a little sailboat print that we have here, and we have it in a few different colorways. Um, she used the darker blue, but there's a light blue, a yellow, and a green colorway. Um, she also used uh, Liberty of London, and then the original one I think she did was from a pillowcase. So... Um, but they are so cute, They're and I, I thought y'all would like to see this. <coughs> I mean, that is super sweet. So way to go, Abby. Abby's been uh, using sheets and pillowcases. Very cute to decorate her kids' rooms and make pillows. She's been doing some really cute pillows. So if, if we're you watching you, seen, Abby. Yeah, we are. We are. They're, it's, they're great ideas. And because of that, Abby, we're like, we need we need some of these other colors. And so we have this darker blue, and then we've got these three that just came in. So Liberty of London, we love it in the Tana lawn, but they actually have started a line with Riley Blake and it's 100% cotton, but it's 45 inches wide and it's a quilting cotton weight. So um, Abby used it for this, this little stuffed animal, but it's great for garments. Um, you can see she also used it on a John John or what is this? It's uh, like a little bubble pattern. Bubble. And so um, it makes up great for garment wear, but also for things like pillows or stuffed animals because it is a little heavier um, quilting weight. But um, yeah. But it's great play wear. Because Definitely. I mean, dresses and everything, mm -hmm, our, mm -hmm. our customers use it for those purposes. So this, this print is called Sea Life and it's, uh, it is by Liberty. She shared this picture with me too, y'all. Look how cute her little guy is in the bed with his new stuffed animal. <laughs> That's so sweet. So from Mason Arness, or she is underscore middle of May, um, I saw this in her story. So I've actually had the pleasure of meeting, meeting Mason at a, a tent sale one year. And um, so I, I follow her on Instagram, and she has an, a, an embroidery business. Um, I, I believe she sews garments and things as well. But she posted these little shirts, these appliqued shirts, and uh, I had to get some for my girls. So um, she did all the work on I them. I love how sweet they are. So their color combinations yeah. are so pretty, mm -hmm. too. So um, y'all yeah, need to check sweet. her out. She's middle of May, and she does. She has very good taste. She does beautifully embroidered and monogrammed these, items. These, these appliques are in the, the um, micro dot, uh, the pin dot pique. And, and the pink and white, and then the gingham. This is cute. Isn't that cute? I mean, her colors are The colors like are perfect. Yeah. yeah. So I love um, Halloween stuff. And so this was this was such a sweet take on Halloween. Very cute. I don't think I've ever seen it done quite like that. But how wonderful is You mean that? cute? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right, like cute. Right. Normally it's really, really bright, really, you know, dark, bright, orange, black, you know, all, all those colors. But... That is. That's why I had to get it, y'all. It's precious. super cute. So that's un precious. <laughs> she's on Instagram. You can yeah. find her at middle of May. Yep. And not only that, she's a nice girl. She is. <laughs> she's I know. A nice girl. Yep. So, 
Sea life, wonderful. So, um, man, y'all, what week is it? Was it Tuesday that we had Joe? Tuesday Joe Tuesday. was here? I know. I was totally mixed up that week. Joe Rosdick came on Tuesday to our Gab and Gush, and she talked all about painting garments. So she has has done beautiful paintings on imperial broadcloth as her fabric of mm -hmm. choice. She does not pre-wash. That was a question that we've had um, mm -hmm. a couple times. And um, But it's okay to pre-wash. I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna ruin your project if you pre have a pre-wash piece so, you want to use. Some, some of y'all absolutely pre-wash everything. So, but but it was interesting to hear because people ask questions. Do you have a light box? I mean, she's an artist. Mm -hmm. She's like, nope, never <laughs> own one. Nope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was really fun because she does a lot of things in a really simple and easy way that all of us can identify with. Mm -hmm. But she's so gifted and talented. I really thought it was going to be some like big fancy thing that she brought in. But it's like, hey, we can do this. In fact, Regina Karish was here and she, she put a picture on her Facebook page, Come Sew With Me. And she bought all the paints and the... Um, the meat, the fabric medium, mm -hmm. paint medium, mm -hmm. and it's like we're expecting to see something from Regina, right? Oh, Soon. definitely, Soon. yeah. So, um, she gave us all the information and she actually gave us a template for a size three cherries painted bodice. So, we offer um, many free PDF downloads on our website at farmhousefabrics.com, um, and we're happy to include this free uh, cherries template mm -hmm. for a painted bodice from Joe Rosdick. So um, other other uh, PDF patterns that we have on there is the fitted crib sheet. Um, when Shelly Smola was here, she gave us steps for constructing her mm -hmm. um, designs. Um, Evie Hawkins, Evie Hawkins mm -hmm. had a bit of stitch, and she did um, steps for machine embroidery. So there's there's all kinds of different things that y'all can grab there. So, and um, in order to download these, you need to be logged in. So that that's the important part. Lots of you figured it out because um, I'm happy to say that many, are many grabbing people these. have been grabbing them. Yeah, that's so, good. So that means like create an account at farmhousefabrics.com mm -hmm. and you must be logged into your account in order to download this from our website. So you guys, the mail just came and I'm going to have to show, <laughs> I'm going to have to show this. This came, if, if any of you read the comments each, each week, usually we hear from um, Fred and Denise Ferris and they always they always make me laugh but they they know I love buttons and so she was she said she's downsizing and so she sent she sent this wonderful button book called um, fun buttons and so if you, if you love buttons you're gonna enjoy it too but the, all these cute things like we had I we, had we had that collection, yeah, we had this collection. Uh -huh. and um, this is uh, Beatrix Potter collection I mean some of these we used to have and we don't have any more but, but it's really fun, and it's fun to read um, about buttons and read what they're called. Like, some are called realistics, and, you know, all that. Hey, we had this Novelty. And... Novelty, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We, do we currently? I know I know we that might, one. We might still have that mm -hmm. one. That one, too, I think. Oh, yeah. Yep. We, li we okay. love in this book. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to have to laugh because I only person in, here in the in the shop that recognize these characters was somebody about my age and so I learned um, how to read using Dick, Jane, and Sally in, in the elementary grades. Like see Dick run. See yes, Dick yeah, run. that's right. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well there's Dick, Jane, and Sally but who's, <laughs> who's the little brother? <laughs> and I'm like, oh I'm so stupid. That's Sally <laughs> right there. That's a little sister. But anyway, the, the animals were, and see if you guys remember, the cat was Puff and the dog was Spot. So maybe some of you out there learned about Dick, Jane, and Sally. But anyway, I really enjoyed this card too. Thank you, Fred and Denise. Thank you. All right, y'all. So we have, um, we're still, we're still enjoying all the time that we spent with Joe, and we have a, a garment to show y'all. So she was here with this, um, 
it's a bobinette dress and it's on the um, Bonnie Blue Design Sophia pattern. And we love all the special touches and, and things that um, Joe did to complete the garment, like the zigzagged hem and then also um, the raw edge that she left on the sleeves. So we pulled out a couple different colorway options um, that if you wanted to recreate the dress or, or create something in a similar style. Um, this is our one of our blues. Let's see. I'm not, oh, actually we call it blue. So it's just a really pretty shade, and um, this is a polyester fabric. Mm -hmm, is that right? Mm -hmm. It's 100% polyester. And so the way the way she did her little ruffle on the shoulders was that she she doubled it over and then folded. The fold part was, you know what? I can put it on you. Yeah. So, so with this, because it's polyester, it's not going to ravel. Right. So you don't have to worry about the edges. We we liked what she did at the hem because it made it look right. finished. And um, I feel like that was important on the hem. But it's nice because you can do things like this and just and, cut it. And that, this was just cut. And so th the edge was of the fold up here facing the, the neck with a trim on top of it. And so Kristen found some really cute coordinates with this. And... You can see the the dress and we did show it last uh on tuesday but man this was really was super really cute. cute and she she happened to have in her stash a vintage uh plissé fabric that the the green went with perfectly but yeah that's that's really pretty isn't that sweet i think this mm -hmm. is a really pretty i'm going to show it on the overhead um i wonder if we still have the sophia we might not have the sophia over there still it's yeah, sophia is too. bonnie blue sophia with us there we go mm -hmm. yeah and it, and it does have the little flutter sleeves, and it has a, a, a small square neck. Really pretty. So um, we paired it up with an imperial cotton, which is a uh, poly cotton blend. So it doesn't wrinkle as much, um, and really hardly any. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a it's a pretty color complement. And we we love this pattern. It's one of our favorites. Yeah, it's it's cute. Fred Ferris said, "Yay, love y'all." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fred. <laughs> I'm gonna have fun. At, I'm gonna have fun with the fun buttons. Yeah. <laughs> so she used this color, and we have. Is this? This is another um, imperial, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So it, the color is a little different, but I, I so think it I, matches. I think it coordinates. Especially fine. when you're breaking it up with yeah. the trims and yeah. stuff. Um, I'm laughing thinking about, I feel like all you have to do is say like Fred and Denise, I and know. then we start laughing. I know. <laughs> That's the response y'all get over here. I was, I'm, I'm always looking for your comments. <laughs> Please don't feel pressured to comment, but oh, it yeah. does. We, yeah, we do pressured. enjoy that. Feel pressure. <laughs> so um, with this, because I love that she used this like all over. Right. Like it's not just a yeah. touch of it. Um, and then even as the main dress. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering, like, how much do you think she used for gathering? Because it's such a thin, oh. I mean, it's almost like you can't use too much. Exactly. When you have something like that, you can go three times the mm -hmm. width. You know, you can definitely, but I think, I don't see, do you think they they were gathered together? I, I don't. I think it's a separate I think gathering. So. I think she set, gathered it separately. And no, you can really gather this because it scrunches way mm -hmm. up and it looks looks pretty. Mm -hmm. Pat Allman says they love, they love the green. Isn't oh, it good. pretty? It is pretty. And I feel like without her example, this I wouldn't have been drawn to this one at first. But she she I did know, such a great neat? job. She did the did the green. Mm -hmm. well, she had the right color to go with it. I couldn't believe that. Okay. Maybe this is like a 1950s color. You know, there is I call there's a green, a light Chartreuse? green. I call I call old fashioned green, uh. <laughs> and it's hard to get it in a ribbon color. Really hard to get an old. An old ribbon company, some of you'll remember, um, Gray Block Ribbons, they were so nice. They had that light green and it was it was pretty. It's like just the color you want that you can't get anymore. Mm. All right, y'all. So um and these are French. This little, little French trims. edge. I yeah, love these. these they're delicate trims. and really mm -hmm. the colors are so sweet. They're really sweet. Mm -hmm. They're in their cotton and they're jacquard. They're woven. The design is woven in. This is, a, so this is pretty. These won't make a turn, but in the Sophia, how she mm -hmm. styled them was just straight over the shoulders and then yeah. straight across the bodice. That's right. I can't even remember the back if it has that same design. 
I can't even remember what Sophia it's does. It's probably just squared, squared off just uh -huh. like this. They want to see the uh, trims on the overhead. Oh, oh okay. okay. Cool. And the little long each this says uh, her granddaughter loves the dress with the fuchsia uh, bobbinet. Oh. The fuchsia. All right. Uh-huh. Y'all, it is raining here. It has not rained here in so long. I just know it's not raining at my house, though, which is sad. All right, so here's the trim. This is, um, I don't know, it's maybe about a quarter inch trim. It looks to be maybe three eighths or a quarter inch. And it has a, a tiny fringe edge, and that's just any kind of overhang outside of the, the edge of the ribbon. So we would call those a fringe edge. And it's a floral trim, and they're jacquard, so they're woven in. So this one, this one right here in the pastel, I'm thinking would be beautiful with our pastel um, dotted Swiss. Oh, wouldn't that? That those would colors? be yes. And it makes me think of this pattern I'm going to show. Yeah, that vintage pattern. That's that, pretty. That could go across mm -hmm. there. Very cute. I love that. Yeah, that that could be really cute. All right, y'all, so we have been pumping out the sewing kits here at Farmhouse. <laughs> um, I hate to even mention our doll kits because it's almost as if when they go online, they're sold. I do think we have maybe maybe one or two of the latest doll kits that we've put together. Um, so doll kits, unlike our sewing kits, are not sized for a specific pattern. They're really just we would say beautiful color combinations. <laughs> so, um, and sometimes weird and crazy. Right, so you, you might get any kind of textured or combinations that you might not typically put together, but they pair up beautifully. So we package them up for y'all. Typically- now, now There are some of you out there that really love dolls. And well, I happen to be one of them, but um, buttons and dolls. And, and sometimes we actually start thinking, we've got to make some more doll kits there's so much fun and then we get everybody's mind clicking what should we name this one your husband one time named a crazy I mean it was a crazy name and then and uh, he was in here one time and I said what would you call this Nathan and I, I wish I could remember he's pretty creative isn't he yeah right. he is. yeah yes but the, the crazier the name the better and then sometimes it might just get somebody like oh I know somebody that, could, that has that name and I better I better make it hmm. So there's all different kinds of sizes. I mean, we, we base them mostly on an 18 inch size doll. So you would have enough to create a garment for an 18 inch size doll. But um, sometimes they're different, but all of the yardage is listed for what's in the package. Um, sewing kits is something that we've also been creating a lot of recently. Um, our sewing kits include all the parts and pieces that you need to create the look. So um, for instance, we have the butterscotch dolly. And um, that is a plaid, um, it looks like a herringbone weave fabric, and it has a velvet, black velvet ribbon across the front. This is used with, um, or styled to be used with the uh, wink and a nod pattern dolly. So dolly has this sweet bow across the front of, of the bodice, and um, it's really sweet, really cute. Yeah. We have another one, um, another plaid, Here's another That's dolly. The doll. Oh yeah, here's mm -hmm. another dolly too. Now this is, um, well I'm thinking, oh this, this is, this fabric is uh, Swiss. Chalet. Chalet. Uh -huh. Thank you. I uh -huh. can't get my words yeah. out today. I'm looking at, and, I, and when they pulled the blue out, I thought that is so beautiful. I mean, that would be pretty with cream. So this is the this is the color, and then it has a cream. Is this a the, flannel fabric? No, this is the, the chalet right here, and this is a lining. This, oh, okay. That's a lining. And so the cream, it, it's a poly wool set chalet from Switzerland. They're really cute. And there's, then you could put a you could put a cream bow there if you wanted to. And, and like we like to say, a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah. So it's so much easier to actually show y'all what we are thinking with these kits mm -hmm. and the digital design. So um, that's been really awesome to be able to show y'all. Has been. So another fall look is this tractors that we put on the Johnny pattern. And this little print is a fabric finders. It's 100% cotton. It's a printed fabric, and. Um, it's on a micro check, but it is so cute with the, whose plate is this? Cross-eyed cricket? Probably cross-eyed cricket. And the plate is in there, so I can tell you. In just two so we do include the pre-pleated insert um, for this particular uh, garment. Little and green tractors, and then 
with everything to, and it's pre, yeah, pre pleated mm -hmm. with everything to um, smock it, mm -hmm. all the colors. So That's if you've cute. if you've not been following our kit, we have a bishop styled for Christmas. Um, it has just red floss for the geometric smocking at the neck and a touch on the sleeve. Um, I saw something similar to this with red shoes and a red bow, and it was it was really really sweet for Christmas. Now this one is not pre pleated, but everything in to to create this kit. Yeah, cute. Um, another look that we have for fall, I have the, the picture here. So this is just fall in South Carolina really means you might need a jacket in December <laughs> or whenever it almost turns winter. You know, somebody just said only three more weeks until the burr months, B-E-R, burr months. And I'm like, I've never heard that I'm before. I'm not either. Yeah. September, October, October, November. Well, December. Oh, there, yeah. there, are, oh, there are four burr months. Yeah. Three more weeks until the four burr months. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> but even we're not saying burr even in November sometimes, right? So this this is actually a printed quilting cotton. Um, again, we love it for garment wear, and then this is just a cute little like everyday dress for fall. So, um, what pattern is this on? That looks like Ruthie. Is it Ruthie? It is. Okay, that's Ruthie by Children's Corner. Cute, cute. Yeah, cute buttons on there. So another um, garment that we have is the classic plaid. So this is just um, a Speckler Vogel printed, or it's a woven um, cotton. And we styled it with a blue corduroy, whoops. We styled it with a blue corduroy at the um, collar and then also at the waist. All right. Pretty. What you, you got some Christmas fabrics in front of you? Yeah, these just came in yesterday. And um, this is another Liberty. Uh, quilting cotton and the adorable tiny tiny little berries and, and leaves. I love this print. This is pretty. It is so pretty. And the colors are soft mm -hmm. and, and sweet. This would be this would be cute on a doll. I knew that was about yeah. to happen. <laughs> I knew it was coming. <laughs> that's cute. Now this is a new Riley Blake um, Christmas quilting cotton with uh, I mean just great little ornaments, ornaments and I'm, I'm gonna get there, Kristen. I'm gonna get there. It's just taking me a minute now. You gotta be patient. What are those balls? I was waiting <laughs> at Christmas trees. Christmas balls. Christmas ornaments. Anyway, anyway, that's pretty. Just came in yesterday, and it's hard to be thinking Christmas, but we're thinking Christmas. We're gonna will it to be, y'all. It's gonna yeah. be cold over here yeah. soon. So Sally has been sewing with Liberty of London quilt. Um, ton of lawns this week and those are a very um tightly woven fabric so she has been um talking about all the different <laughs> things that she does a little bit differently when it comes to a tightly woven fabric and this one specifically was a lawn fabric so which needles and hand sewing needles what were all your well tips and tips i needed and tricks? A, i needed a thinner hand sewing needle but um but this th this isn't totally sold out yet but look how gorgeous this this is a vintage vogue six seven seven one i've said it so many times right mm -hmm. and this is for um kristen's oldest daughter charlie and i think she with her blonde hair she'll be beautiful in this and so um the the lawn fabrics this one I, i'm going to show you i lined this one in a just a really really lightweight um cotton and i mean you almost want to call it a boil but it's a super light bat batiste and and it was a great color for this and it was just enough to make it opaque enough that it's not going to show through even though we're calling these beach cover-ups but still she could wear this as a dress definitely so um anyway so sewing with this is a, a lightweight fabric it's a lawn and um, i like to use a size 10 it's 70 slash 10 it's a, this schmetz needle microtex <clears throat> the number is 1729 but I like to use a size 10 Microtex needle. So it's a finer needle? It is a finer needle. Let's see. <clears throat> you could go down to an eight if you wanted to, but I think a 10 is fine. And um, there we go in the overhead. And, and you don't want to use a ballpoint needle because that you use on a knit and I'm, I think it would clunk some holes in, huge in holes. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, this has a really sharp point and, and the Tantalon is it's so finely woven, but it's tightly woven, which I found out when I was hemming um, something. Oh, I know. This. 
this this is Liberty and when I, I wanted to hand him it and man I had a hard time getting my needle through and so I, I needed it. I needed a skinny. So with needle. a tinier needer, needle, it, it goes through and in yeah. those tightly woven fabrics easier. <laughs> so that's how the, the question, do you use a thimble or not, or, yeah. a rat arose. Because I kept poking my finger in, um, and like a lot of people said, I don't use a needle. Sometimes I use a table. Well, I was doing that too. But I needed to find a thimble, which I didn't do. Or a t smaller needle. Or a smaller which needle. Which you did not I, do. Which I didn't do yeah. either. But I thought, I'll be done with this in a minute. But... Um, but those, but it's so easy to sew on this fabric, and and it washes and wears beautifully. I I know people that have, have as an adult made themselves a blouse, worn it for twenty years, and it looks just as good now as it did when they first made Talk it. Talking about so, on Liberty, on Liberty, yeah. the Liberty lawn. Mm -hmm. So I know it's more expensive than other fabrics, but it's one of those things that's really worth it. Now we wouldn't actually say to do it this way, but. I'll, I often say I'm spoiled with all kinds of different garments for my children. I have laundered Liberty very like rough. I mean, I've, I've not been delicate right. with it and it, and it holds up great does, to a regular it? wash mm -hmm. and a regular mm -hmm. dry. I mean, I mean, I think you could do it. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to be like hand washing everything and I do hand wash everything. You don't either. <laughs> I do. <laughs> right. I do. Eileen uh, Marie wanted to know if the quilting cottons require more ironing than the Liberty lawns do. Well, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I would say. I mean, Liberty does not wrinkle like you would think it would, being it's that not, it's, it's very lightweight bad. and 100% right. cotton. But really, it's the same thing with a printed quilting cotton weight. Because because these are heavily printed, they don't wrinkle as much. Mm -hmm. But also because it's a little heavier weight, that also it's 100% cotton. But because mm -hmm. it's a little heavier, it still does not wrinkle as much. I would really say they wrinkle very similarly. Like this one probably more. I would think that you would iron less on a quilting cotton than you would on this ton of lawn. But you're gonna iron. They're 100% yeah. cotton. Get your Speaking iron out. Speaking of the quilting cotton, um, can we see a close up of the little? Sure. Um, the, the little. Small print? Okay, we're gonna do an overhead for for um, Facebook. I'm sorry, Instagram. We can't do an overhead, but we could. But it is really That's tiny. Pretty. Yeah. I mean, you could do it as an <laughs> accent fabric or a, even a, a garment all over fabric would be very pretty. All right. So That's cute. you have pulled out, is it a Spanish lace that you put on the hem um, or English? Spanish. Is it Spanish? Yeah. Okay. In fact, see, it would be pretty on, on a Liberty too, mm -hmm. but my, um, my, one of my granddaughters is having a birthday party tomorrow, and so I decided I need to finish the nightgown that I that I started how many weeks ago? I don't know. Week two is now complete. Why is it week two? I don't know. Why is it week two? It's like I never did the handwork. I never did. But you, you remember this. This is, and I, oh, I meant to bring the pattern. This is a Primrose Lane Victorian Dreams. Victorian Dreams. Victorian <laughs> Dreams. Primrose Lane Victorian Dreams. This is Vintage Little Lady. Iris. Iris. Okay, the little eye mask. So anyway, this is our Romantic Roses fabric. And lightweight. And so I did all, I finished, finished it all up. Hemmed it. And I thought, this looks kind of plain. And so I decided that it could use a little bit of lace at the hem. Which you zigzagged on. I zigzagged that on. <laughs> she hand finished this hem, hem and then zigzagged on I, a lace. I, I actually top stitched it. I see it. <laughs> yeah. But I thought, you know, it's a nightgown, right? It's a nightgown. But it's a perfect color, right? Isn't so we do have a good plenty of um, I, uh, Spanish laces. Um, it is a little bit different. It has a little bit different look than um, a French or a Swiss. Um, as indicated by the name, I guess, but um, it it almost it's a heavier, a denser kind of yeah, look. It's a heavier. But it's it's very beautiful quality, um, and you can see that it, even though it's heavier, this is mm -hmm. this is lightweight, a lightweight batiste fabric, and it matches beautifully. So it just gives a little bit of touch on the bottom, like it makes it a little more girly. Mm -hmm. 
because you know she is seven. So. Well, and um, James Seeley, we like to to oh, we yes. like to talk about James Seeley all yeah. the time, but we love it when she comes in here to talk about heirloom garments, um, which she does beautifully. And she uses um, like a heavier weighted lace on a lot of boy garments, so she'll incorporate Spanish laces mm -hmm. into like mm -hmm. boy fancy bands or something for a, a boy Christmas. And you gown. look great on linens. Yes. You can put them on linens mm -hmm. and they look really, really wonderful. So it's just a little different. Mm -hmm. So it's fun. Well, because we were talking about thimbles and then I punched holes in my in my finger when I was pushing that through, I, I pulled up um, thimbles that, that we have. And so now this one is No More Sore Fingers, Better Needle Control, called Thimble It. And it has... I feel like I would use that. 64 self-stick ovals. And so, and it's made by Colonial Needle Company, and you can stick that on your finger. It's almost like a glue, like a, a, um, a little, like a... The, you just stick or, it to the end of your yeah, finger. Yeah. And so, I don't know how many uses you can get out of it, but I, I probably would try putting it back on the paper to use it again. <laughs> I probably would, too. <laughs> Jeanette George says she doesn't use a, thumble, a thimble. She owns many, but her thumbs and fingers have holes in them. Oh, right. I, I know. That's why I'm always poking. This one's really sore. Now, um, I, I didn't even remember that we had this, but somebody mentioned they like this one. This is a leather thimble called a skin thimble, and it has a needle shield at the very tip. And so I guess we could be go more. overhead. So that, that's that little that little shield right there, that little metal shield. It's what you can poke your... Um, poke your needle through with. I might would test it on the leather too. It probably is durable yeah. enough to withstand. Now this is by the Tulip Company and we, this is a ring thimble and so not sure how far down this goes. Maybe just short, maybe close. Anyway, we carry it in lots and lots of different sizes. It's the ring thimble and so you still have the tip of your finger if you want to use it for anything. I don't know, that makes me feel like a, uh, a knight. Like you're going to glove up in these metal <laughs> gloves for hand sewing. <laughs> Or yeah. breast knuckles. <laughs> but anyway. I want to see someone with all their, their rings Oh, I on. know. It's like, ooh, look yeah. at me. <laughs> I got all my jewelry on today. I would have Pull to Pull down wear... your magnifying glasses. <laughs> yeah. Have all your thimble rings on. <laughs> this is more my, this is a thread cutter thimble, and it's a ring thimble too. But it has a thread, a little thread cutter thing, like if you were flying somewhere, you'd probably get away with wearing, wearing this brass knuckle <laughs> Yeah. Sally's trying to send you to jail. Yeah. But anyway, I, I kind of think this is this is cool because sometimes you just need something to, to push that mm -hmm. needle through. Then these, we've carried these for a long time. They come in different sizes. They're like silicone or something. And, and um, you know, this, this is large and I think it's going to fall off my finger, but I kind of have big hands, so probably I need a medium. But that's what somebody said. It's hard to get them to fit just right. Mm -hmm. In. But I think you kind of have to get used to it. I'm thinking, me and you both have big hands. Can you believe that? And I can't believe that's too me. big for you. I know, it's like too loose. Yeah, it is big. Isn't it loose? Mm. Oh, well, then maybe if, if we put it on good. our thumb. Deanne Crawford says she uses the symbol and it makes hemming easier. I think mm -hmm. it would have made my life easier mm -hmm. yesterday. That's, that's really true. So we are dreaming up. Um, Sally has actually made this vintage dress before, and she used a pastel dotted twist, which is probably why it's bouncing around our yeah, heads. It is. Um, this is such a cute adaptation. I mean, I feel like you could incorporate it to, to any bodice, but this particular pattern, is it's so cute. It has this um, gathered piece that you put across the front, mm -hmm. and um, they have added like a top stitch trim in, in three rows, but it makes it look like puffing strips almost. Yeah, it's, it's really neat. So this is Simplicity 2945, and I'm gonna show you like this is so cool because what do we love we love the kimberly pattern and the kimberly pattern by bonnie blue and it has the same shape bodice as this little i made this little sleeveless one right here and so this i'm going to hold this one up so we're, we're giving you all the cheat on yeah, how to make it yourself cheat. this is the guide so this would be like if that if the bodice was just flat this is your this is your guide and you would want to make cut that out of a, a a piece of fabric so that you have your guide um, and it would be flat. But this, this is the piece that you gather. And so this is on the fold right here. And I actually measured. And so this is actually twice as long as the guide. 
So it's twice the width as your bodice so, front. Yeah, twice the width as the bodice front. And all they did here, and this is what I did too, you run a gathering thread at the top, at the center, and, and at the bottom of the this wide piece. And I use, because Kristen reminded me, I used a Swiss beading on, on top of that gathering thread and um, ran ribbon through that. So after it was gathered and she was yeah. ready to put it mm -hmm. onto the bodice, she then yeah. did and the rose. So this... Another close up on this pattern. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, this is not hard to do. We're going to do a close up on the patterns. The back is not gathered. The back is a plain back. I mean, honestly, y'all could use any bodice pattern. I mean, it could be even like a, a narrow yoke and just do one strip if you want to do one across the top That's and the bottom. True. But, but I, th I think I like that one because it actually had, it was cut across here and it had straps. So it was easy. So to, it was very similar to, we yeah. think that we think to, to really recreate this look that the Kimberly would be the easiest because it has that more squared right. off bodice. And then the strapping is a different attachment for yeah, that, that makes it easier. Mm -hmm. And so this, the, the vintage pattern is actually a little bit more um, closer to the waist. It's a, the, the yoke is a little bit longer than the Kimberly, but that would be easy to, to make Along that adjustment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. So, so the, way, the way Sally made it was it was actually three layers. So mm -hmm. she had her, her top piece, like it's almost like she finished a bodice. And then added the gathered, gathered piece as the final outer layer. So you had your, well, not for, you were talking about that for the netting. Oh, is how you would I do it, it for the netting. Yeah, we yeah. were saying that we could use the netting. And so you might have a lining cut out of the flat bodice piece. Gather your netting up and sew it to your flat bodice piece. So then, then, you, have, then you have a piece that's gathered and underlined. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then you so line that, it. that, and then you line it again. Then you line so that it would again. be your three it, layers. That would be the three yeah. layers. You'd line it again. But you could use a boil. I, I use dotted Swiss. It was lightweight. It's pretty. It is pretty. It's pretty. I, I was really, really happy. So happy with it that I made up the pattern for the older sister to match the little sister. Which is when she had to hack this yeah. pattern to create <laughs> the look. So we I know did. it works well out of the Kimberly. Yeah. Yeah. So... So Kimberly is, is easy to use and good. So a lot of times you can get an idea from a vintage pattern to incorporate it mm -hmm. with the patterns that you already have. And so we think That's that right. by doubling the width of, of a bodice like Kimberly, mm -hmm. um, you can create this exact mm -hmm. same look. And this was interesting because a lot of times we feel like um, the Bonnie Blue patterns, they're roomy. Mm -hmm. And so I laid this size two vintage pattern on top of the 24 month size Bonnie Blue. It's pretty much the same size. I'm How surprised about that? about that. I was really surprised too. So that mm. the width of it was about the same size. It gives you an idea. Mm -hmm. But I, I thought this would be much smaller, but it was after it. Cool. Yeah, this one actually shows it looks like a, a real sheer fabric over the top of a see, you can see that mm -hmm. see through it. Mm -hmm. So they gathered up a sheer fabric, maybe like a embroidered organza or something like that. Mm -hmm. Really sweet. And look at those little white gloves. <laughs> you cute, probably cute. never wore those when you were a little girl, did you? No, only, I didn't. Only those people that know Dick, Jane, and Sally <laughs> wore little white gloves to church. I wish y'all would wear them when you watch Gavin Gush. It would be a lot more fun. <laughs> All right, y'all. We do a twice-weekly giveaway here at, at uh, Farmhouse, and we like to ask you a question. This week it was, do you use a thimble or do you not use a thimble when hand sewing? Um, we are drawing this week for a magazine from Classic Sewing, and um, so many people were saying how, how much they were interested in this giveaway, which is so fun to hear. Eyelet fabric, we had an awesome, I don't know, eight wheel corduroy maybe. Um, is that a poly cotton? Mm -hmm. It's a 100% it's cotton. cotton. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, so you wanna see who wins? This. And we have this. That's what it's for, actually. <laughs> so when you kids. get it, y'all can... <laughs> All right. When, when we're done with that, I'm going to talk about this antique pillow. So you want to draw? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's see who the winner is going to be. Well, I'm picking up way Twelve. too many at one time. 
I didn't separate these very well. Okay, this is Carolyn McKinley. Oh, Carolyn, you do not use a thimble. I should put a thimble in there for you. <laughs> so Carolyn McKinley is our winner. And congratulations. We will be contacting you and getting your address. And so... So another thing, Sally was... was um, going through her vintage or antique stash and found a beautiful, what'd you say, pillowcase? It is a pillowcase and it's so sweet. Um, I mean, this is not, this isn't stiff enough to be organdy. Do you think it's like the super light, or it's a very, very mm -hmm. lightweight organdy. So, um, many, many years ago, I was making, um, uh, pillows and things like that for a, a for a, a shop in Augusta. And one of the one of the pillows was similar to this, and it was it's a it was a tube. This is just a tube of fabric, and it was um, this part was linen, and then lace at each end, and it was beautiful. And so then people could monogram on it or um, whatever, however they wanted. And so inside here you would just slip a little a little baby pillow or something, and um, but they this is like a boudoir pillow. It's beautiful. So I'm going to tell you how to do that. So I cut a piece of, I measured it, and now they have they have a seam on on the fabric. They they have a French seam at the top and the bottom. I think that is not necessary. I think you only need to have one seam at at one side. And and actually the finished the finished um, measurement of this centerpiece is 12 by 12. I was really surprised that it was square. Isn't that funny? Doesn't it look very Oh, yeah. Tight? Wow. It's 12 by 12. And so, all of this lace was constructed, was attached to each row, attached by hand. And this um, pillowcase was made by hand. Oh, my hand goodness. Stitching. Look how many rows. I bet they had a thimble. <laughs> anyway. Or this would be red. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so, this would be, this is this the centerpiece right here 12 inches by 12, 12 inches finished yep so finished so you'd have to cut it one piece 13 inches long by 25 inches long so that when you folded it up it would and and put your seams in it would end up being 12 by 12 and so then here's your long piece right here and you they they have five inches of lace at each end and so i suppose you could construct your fancy band I would totally put it on before and then right yeah construct it first mm -hmm. and then divide it in half mm -hmm. and put it on each end and so it five inches of lace on each end um, there were six insertion laces and one edging lace on each end and these are you can see these are antique laces I I, I, I don't I haven't seen this insertion these are really different and beautiful but so here is a wide insertion, a narrow, a narrow insertion, a wide, a narrow, wide, narrow, and then, then an edging that's maybe inch and a quarter. And isn't that beautiful? It's very simple, but really, really gorgeous. I mean, I, I also feel like that would be such a sweet, like, newborn baby present. You oh, know, you could put wonderful. the birth date on here and a name, yes. like, even if it's just in a corner, that would be that's so right. pretty. That's right. So see, they don't have a seam in the, they don't have a seam at one of the folds, so they must have seamed their fabric, opened it mm -hmm. up, and then, um, and then sewed on the whole thing as one fancy band. But anyway, I wanted to show this, because this is a beautiful, it's in beautiful shape, and it's, it's a great gift idea. Pretty. Yep. All right, y'all. Um, All right. We are looking forward to seeing y'all again, and make sure that y'all enter our giveaways, and um, we'll we'll keep in touch with our newsletter. Um, you can sign up for that on our homepage at farmhousefabrics.com, and we'll see y'all back here soon. Kelly, will you come turn us off on Instagram? <laughs> and since I have another minute, <laughs> uh, today 